Hello! Welcome to the video for the hypervolume of a four-dimensional sphere. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The intensity of this video is extra spicy. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to model four-dimensional objects, and you should be able to find the hypervolumes of high-dimensional spheres. Our motivation is that we know formulas for the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, and we know a formula for the volume of a sphere, 4 pi over 3 r cubed. Is there a formula for the volume, or whatever it is, of the four-dimensional version of a sphere? And maybe more importantly, what does this even look like? What does a four-dimensional sphere even mean? So we're going to spend a bunch of time thinking about that. Let's find out. First, we'll start with how do we visualize circles, spheres, and 4D spheres? And it's important to start with a definition for what we mean by these things, which will make it easier to understand. So if you want to define a sphere of some high dimension, start with your n, which is your dimension, a non-negative real number r, which we'll think of as the radius, and some point c, which is the center. So a sphere of radius r is all points in rn, so n-dimensional space, that are of distance r to the center point c. So to define a sphere, you need a center point, a radius, and a dimension. So we know what a two-dimensional sphere looks like. It's all points in 2D space that are equidistant to a center point. And we know what a sphere looks like, 3D sphere. So what does a one-dimensional sphere look like? So we start with a center point, and then it's all points on the line that are of distance r to this point. So a one-dimensional sphere of radius r is exactly these two points here. So a one-dimensional sphere is really just two points. So already this definition can be helpful by going down a dimension. We understand dimensions two and three, but if we go down a dimension, it already tells us something interesting. And we can even go up a dimension to dimension four and see what that looks like. But before we go up, let's go down one more level. So right into the basement. What does a zero dimensional sphere of radius R look like? Uh, well, just this, it's just a point. So it's the center and it's all points in zero dimensional space that are uh, of radius R to it, but there are no points, so it's just the center. Uh, this is strange, but surprisingly useful, theoretically. But we're not going to spend too much time on this. We're going up dimensions. So it's helpful to, if we want to understand something of higher dimensions or different dimensions, it's useful to understand what we already know a little bit better and a little bit more abstractly. So here's a, a sphere, and we can think of the sphere uh, as being comprised of other things. So let's start off with the top and see what happens. So if you go down a little bit from the top, you end up with a circle. So imagine you like cut your piece of paper into that sphere, you'd get the circle. And if your paper went down even further, the circle would get bigger. So this would be the circle that slices with your, your piece of paper going through the sphere. If you go down even further, you get a bigger circle. And then as you keep going down, the circles get smaller again. So it's, you can think of if your paper was to pass through the sphere, it would go nothing, 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 single point, circles that get bigger, 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 bigger until they get to the maximum radius. And then they go smaller, 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 smaller until they get to the bottom, single point, and then it disappears again. You can also think of this of uh, sort of in reverse, where if you had a piece of paper and someone pushed a sphere through that, that piece of paper, what would it look like? It would look like nothing, then a point, and then circles that got bigger and bigger, and then circles that got smaller and smaller, and then a point, and that's it. So our big observation is that a sphere is made up of slices of circles. All right, let's see what else we know. Now let's go back to a circle. So if you were to push your paper through the circle, it would look like this. Now, you might think, oh, this just looks like two, two points, or maybe it's like kind of a line. 
Well, it's not really a line because our circle is only the outer part of this. So how can we actually think of what this is? Well, it's a one-dimensional sphere, right? This is our picture of a 1D sphere. Here's the center, and then here are the points that are, that are equidistant to it. So let's keep going further down. Now we're going to get a bigger 1D sphere. As we go down, we get the largest 1D sphere we can get. And then as we go down, we get smaller and smaller 1D spheres. So the thing to note here is that a circle is made up of slices of 1D spheres. So let's put this together. A 2D sphere is made up of slices of 1D spheres, and a 3D sphere is made up of slices of 2D spheres. Now, when we frame it like this, you can start to think of what should happen with a four-dimensional sphere. Now, maybe you don't have any experience with four-dimensional spheres, but you can make a guess as to what it should be made up of. Out of. Indeed, a four-dimensional sphere will be made up of slices of 3D spheres. So let's see what that kind of looks like. So here's our 4D sphere. And again, we're going to take a piece of paper and push it down through the top. When we're right at the top, it's going to be a small 3D sphere. As we go further down, it's going to be an even larger 3D sphere. Once we get down to the middle, it's going to be the largest possible 3D sphere. And then as we go further down, the 3D sphere is going to get smaller. So we have these blue spheres that are getting smaller. So it's just like the other cases where you have a one dimension smaller object that's getting bigger and then getting smaller. So I'll give you a moment to just look at this without all the extra noise if you want. All right, so we're done looking at pretty pictures. Now we're gonna do a little bit of math. So if you were here just for the pretty pictures, you can tune out now, we're gonna see a bunch of integral signs. So let's, our goal is to compute the hypervolume of a four dimensional sphere, but let's start with areas of circles and, air, and volumes of spheres, which we already know. So what's the area of a circle? Well, we can think about it as adding up all of these lengths. So we'll think about it as adding up the lengths of the one dimensional spheres that make it up. So if we want to write this as an integral, we go from, uh, we can think of this as time. We're sort of passing through the sphere and at each time we get a particular slice. So for example, if this was our T, then we would have this full length right across here. And if we add up all of those horizontal lengths, we'll get the full area. And we're gonna think of this T as going from minus R all the way at the bottom all the way up to r, all the way up at the top. And so as we pass from minus r to r, we're going to add up the lengths. Now using this triangle, we can use Pythagoras to actually figure out what this length is in terms of t and r. Remember that r is given to us, it's just some number, and t is the variable. So we're allowed to write everything in terms of t and r. So if you use Pythagoras, you'll get this square root of r squared minus t squared right here. And then there are two of them, so that's multiplied by two. Now, this integral right here is actually kind of tricky, and you need some tools from a little bit later on. You need something called trig substitutions to do it. So we'll actually come back to that a little bit later in the course. All right, what about the volume of a three-dimensional sphere? How would we find that? Well, in this case, you would add up the areas of the two-dimensional spheres. So again, if you went out to a particular time t, then you'd have this whole disk right here, and you're adding up the area of that disk. So again, it looks like an integral from minus r all the way up to r. And once you're at a particular time, you take the area that you have right here. So we can find the area of that thing. It'll actually give us the same uh, distance right here, the same r of t. And we know that the area of this disk will then be pi r t squared. So pi and then that radius squared. This one we actually know how to do. So I'll show it to you. 
we take the square, the square and the square root get, get uh, they disappear. And now we have just a polynomial in terms of t, so we can integrate both of those, evaluate it at r and minus r, and then eventually you get your familiar formula, 4 pi over 3 r cubed. Okay, so now we get to look at the really fun stuff. So what is the hypervolume of a four-dimensional sphere? Well, again, it's going to be the same idea. Add up the volumes of the three-dimensional spheres. So the hypervolume should be going from minus r to r, and at every stage, every time t, you add up the volume. So at some stage t, here's the radius, and then we can figure out the volume of this three-dimensional sphere just from that radius. Turns out to be this, just like we, we saw before. So here we're using the volume of a sphere. Now, we're so close to finding out an actual formula for this hypervolume, but unfortunately, this integral is kind of challenging for us right now. So we'll need to wait until later in the course, once we learn trig substitutions, in order to figure out how to evaluate this. But be on the lookout for tools that will help us solve this, because once we can solve this, then we'll have an answer to our question. Let's end with some exercises and some reflections. Draw a four-dimensional sphere. Find the hypervolume of a 4D box. This is actually surprisingly easy. Set up an integral that finds the five-dimensional hypervolume of a 5D sphere. Doesn't that sound fun? And some reflections. How did we think of the fourth dimension as time in these examples? What are some similarities or symmetries between different spheres of different dimensions? Thank you very much and have a great day.